Hi there, and welcome to our podcast. And this week at London Visited, we go to Trafalgar Square to tell you all about this iconic part of London. My name's Steve, and each week I'm going to bring to you the facts, history, and information about different parts of this great capital city. If you've been to London, or are planning on visiting, live here, or just love London from afar, then this is the podcast for you. Don't forget to visit our YouTube channel, London Visited, to see videos covering this place and so many others across London. And now to this week's podcast. Trafalgar Square is a public square in central London, built around the area formerly known as Charing Cross. Its name commemorates the Battle of Trafalgar by the British naval victory in the Napoleonic Wars over France and Spain that took place on the 21st of October 1805 off the coast of Cape Trafalgar. The site of Trafalgar Square had been a significant landmark since the 13th century and originally contained the King's Mews. After George IV moved the Mews to Buckingham Palace, the area was redeveloped by John Nash, but progress was slow after his death and the square did not open till 1844. The 52 metre, 169 foot Nelson's Column is at the centre and is guarded by four lion statues. A number of the commemorative statues and sculptures occupy the square, but the fourth plinth has been left empty since 1840 and was host to contemporary art since 1999. The square has been used for community gatherings and political demonstrations. A Christmas tree has been donated to the square by Norway since 1947 and is put up for 12 days before and after Christmas. The square is the centre of annual celebrations on New Year's Eve and it was well known for its pigeons until their removal in the early 21st century. The square is named after the Battle of Trafalgar, although the square was not named as such until 1835. The name Trafalgar is a Spanish word of Arabic origin, derived from either Trafalgar, meaning Cape of the Cave or Laurel, or Trafalgarb, which is Cape of the West. Trafalgar Square is owned by the Queen in right of the Crown and managed by the Greater London Authority. Nelson's Column is in the centre of the square, flanked by fountains designed by Sir Edward Lutchins between 1937 and 1939. Replacements for the two Peterhead granite, now in Canada, and guarded by four monumental bronze lions, sculptured by Sir Edward Langster. At the top of the column is a statue of Horatio Nelson, who commanded the British Navy at the Battle of Trafalgar. Surrounding the square are the National Gallery on the north side and St Martin in the Fields Church to the east. Also on the east is South Africa House, and facing it across the square is Canada House. To the southwest is the Mall, which leads towards Buckingham Palace via Admiralty Arch, while Whitehall is to the south and the Strand to the east. Charing Cross Road passes between the National Gallery and the church. London Underground's Charing Cross Station on the Northern and Bakerloo lines has an exit in the square. The lines had separate stations, of which the Bakerloo line was one called Trafalgar Square until they were linked and renamed in 1979 as part of the construction of the Jubilee line. Other nearby stations are Embankment, which connect the District, Circle, Northern and Bakerloo lines, and Leicester Square on the Northern and Piccadilly lines. A point in Trafalgar Square is regarded as the official centre of London in legislation and when measuring distances from the capital. Building work on the south side of the square in the late 1950s revealed deposits from the last interglacial. Among the findings were the remains of cave lions, rhinoceroses, straight tusks elephants and hippopotami. The site has been significant since the 13th century. During Edward I's reign, it hosted the King's Muse, running north from the T-junction in the south Charing Cross, where the Strand from the city meets Whitehall, coming north from Westminster. From the region of Richard II to that of Henry VII, the Muse was at the western end of the Strand. The name Royal Muse comes from the practice of keeping hawks here for molting. Mew is an old word for this. After a fire in 1534, the Muse were rebuilt as stables and remained here until George IV moved them to Buckingham Palace. After 1732, the King's Mews were divided into the Great Mews and smaller Green Mews to the north by the Crown Stables, a large block built to the designs of William Kent. Its site is now occupied by the National Gallery. In 1826, the Commissioners of H.M. Woods, Forests and Land Revenues instructed John Nash to draw up plans for clearing a large area to the south of Kent's stable block and as far east as St Martin's Lane. His plans left open the whole area of what became Trafalgar Square, except for a block in the centre, which he reserved for a new building for the Royal Academy. The plans included the demolition and redevelopment of buildings between St Martin's Lane and the Strand and the construction of a new road, 
now called Duncanyon Street, across the churchyard of St Martin in the Fields. The Charing Cross Act was passed in 1826, and the clearance started soon after. Nash died soon after construction started impeding its progress. The square was to be named for William IV, commemorating his ascent to the throne in 1830. Around 1835, it was decided that the square would be named after the Battle of Trafalgar, as suggested by architect George Ladwell Taylor, commemorating Nelson's victory over the French and the Spanish in 1805, during the Napoleonic Wars. After the clearance, development progressed slowly. The National Gallery was built on the north side between 1832 and 1838, to a design by William Wilkins. And in 1837, the Treasury approved Wilkins' plan for the laying out of the square, but it was not put into effect. In April 1840, following Wilkins' death, new plans by Charles Barry were accepted, and construction started within weeks. For Barry, as for Wilkins, a major consideration was increasing the visual impact of the National Gallery, which had been widely criticised for its lack of grandeur. He dealt with the complex sloping site by excavating the main area to the level of the footway between Coxburgh Street and the Strand, and constructing a 15-foot, 4.6 metre high, balustrated terrace with a roadway on the north side, and steps up at each end leading to the main level. Wilkins had proposed a similar solution with a central flight of steps. Plinths were provided for sculptures and pedestals for lighting. All the stonework was of Aberdeen granite. In 1841, it was decided that the two fountains should be included in the layout. An estimated budget, excluding paving and sculptures, was £11,000. The earth was removed and used to level Green Park. The square was originally surfaced with tarmacadam, which was replaced with stone in the 1920s. Trafalgar Square was opened to the public on the 1st of May 1844. Nelson's column was planned independently of Barry's work. In 1838, a Nelson Memorial Committee had approached the government proposing that the monument to the victory of Trafalgar, funded by public subscription, should be erected in the square. A competition was held and won by architect William Railton, who proposed a 218-foot, 3-inch, 66.5 metres, Corinthian column, topped by a statue of Nelson and guarded by four sculptured lions. The design was approved, but received widespread objections from the public. Construction went ahead beginning in 1840, but with the height reduced to 145 feet 3 inches, 44.2 metres, the column was completed and the statue raised in November 1843. The last of the bronze release on the column pedestals was not completed until May 1854, and the four lions, although part of the original design, were only added in 1867. Each lion weighs seven tons. A hoarding remained around the base of Nelson's column for some years, and some of his upper scaffolding remained in place. Landseer, the sculptor, had asked for a lion that had died at London Zoo to be brought to his studio. He took so long to complete sketches that its corpse began to decompose, and some parts had to be improvised. The statues have paws that resembles cats more than lions. Barry was unhappy about Nelson's column being placed in the square. In July 1840, when its foundations had been laid, he told a parliamentary select committee that it would, in my opinion, be desirable that the area should be wholly free from the insulated objects of art. In 1940, the Nazi SS developed secret plans to transfer Nelson's column to Berlin after an expected German invasion, as related by Norman Longmate in If Britain Had Fallen in 1972. The square has been Grade 1 listed on the Register of Historic Parks and Gardens since 1996. Redevelopment A major 18-month redevelopment of the square, led by W.S. Atkins with Foster and Partners as sub-consultants, was completed in 2003. The work involved closing the eastbound road along the north side and diverting traffic around the other three sides of the square, demolishing the central section of the northern remaining wall and inserting a wide set of steps to the pedestrianised terrace in front of the National Gallery. The construction includes two lifts for disabled access, public toilets and a cafe. Access between the square and the gallery had been by two crossings at the northeast and northwest corners. Statues and Monuments Barry's scheme provided two plinths for sculptures on the north side of the square, a bronze equestrian statue of George IV by Sir Francis Chantry, originally intended to be placed on top of the marble arch, was installed on the eastern plinth in 1844, while the other remained empty until the late 20th century. There are two other statues on plinths, both installed during the 19th century. 
General Sir Charles James Napier by George Cannon Adams in the southwest corner in 1855, and Major General Sir Henry Havelock by George Burns in the southeast in 1861. In 2000, the Mayor of London, Ken Livingstone, suggested replacing the statues with figures more familiar to the general public. In the 21st century, the empty plinth on the northwest corner of the square, known as the Fourth Plinth, has been used to show specially commissioned temporary artworks. The scheme was initiated by the Royal Society of Arts and continued by the Fourth Plinth Commission, appointed by the Mayor of London. Hi there, and thanks so much for listening to this podcast on the history of London. And if you're enjoying this, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up on YouTube. Now, if you want to get more involved with London Visited, don't forget you can join us as a member by going to patreon.com forward slash London Visited with so many different benefits. Or you can purchase a 4K photograph of London from our website, londonvisited.co.uk, both of which support us and keep the channel going. Once again, thanks for listening. And now back to the podcast. There are three busts of admirals against the north wall of the square. These are Lord Jellicoe by Sir Charles Wheeler and Lord Beatty by William Macmillan. They were installed in 1948 in conjunction with the square's foundations, which also commemorate them. The third of the Second World War, First Sea Lord Admiral Cunningham by Frank Belsky, was unveiled alongside them on the 2nd of April 1967. On the south side of Trafalgar Square, on the site of the original Charing Cross, is a bronze equestrian statue of Charles I by Herbert Le Sueur. It was cast in 1633 and placed in its present position in 1678. The two statues on the lawn in front of the National Gallery are a statue of James II and Lawrence Veldemeyen to the west of the portico and one of George Washington, a replica of an original work to the east. The latter was a gift from the Commonwealth of Virginia installed in 1921. The two statues erected in the 19th century have been since removed. One of Edward Jenner, pioneer of the smallpox vaccine, was set up in the southwest corner of the square in 1858, next to that of Napier. It showed Jenner sitting in a chair in a relaxed pose and was inaugurated at a ceremony presided over by Prince Albert. It was moved to Kensington Gardens in 1862. The other, of General Charles George Gordon, was erected on an 18-foot high pedestal between the fountains in 1888. It was removed in 1943 and recited on the Victoria Embankment 10 years later. The Fountains In 1841, following suggestions from local paving board, Barry agreed that two fountains should be installed to counteract the effects of reflected heat and glare from the asphalt surface. The first commissioner of woods and forests welcomed the plan because the fountains reduced the open space available for public gatherings and reduced the risk of riotous assembly. The foundations were fed from two wells, one in front of the National Gallery and one behind it connected by a tunnel. Water was pumped to the fountains by a steam engine housed in the building behind the gallery. In the late 1930s, it was decided to replace the pump and the centrepieces of the fountains. The new centrepieces, designed by Sir Edward Lutchins, were memorials to Lord Jellicoe and Lord Beatty. Although busts of the admirals, initially intended to be placed in the fountain surrounds, were placed against the northern retaining wall. When the project was completed after the Second World War, The fountains cost almost £50,000. The old ones were presented to the Canadian government and now are located in Ottawa's Confederation Park and Regina's Wisconsin Centre. A programme of restoration was completed in May 2009. The pump system was replaced by one capable of sending an 80-foot, 24-metre jet of water into the air. An LED lighting system that can project different combinations of colours onto the fountains was installed to reduce the cost of lighting maintenance and to coincide with the 2012 Summer Olympics. The square was once famous for its feral pigeons, and feeding them was a popular activity. Pigeons began flocking to the square before the construction was completed, and feed sellers became well known in the Victorian era. The desirability of the birds' presence was contentious. Their droppings disfigured the stonework, and the flock, estimated at its peak to be 35,000, was considered a health hazard. A stall seller, Bernie Rayner, infamously sold birdseed to tourists at inflated prices. In February 2001, the sale of birdseed in the square was stopped and other measures were introduced to discourage the pigeons, including the use of birds of prey. Supporters continued to feed the birds, but in 2003, the mayor, Ken Livingston, enacted bylaws to ban feeding them in the square. In September 2007, Westminster City Council passed further bylaws banning feeding birds on the pedestrianised North Terrace and other pavements in the area. Nelson's column was repaired from years of damage from pigeon droppings at a cost of £140,000. 
For many years, revelers celebrating the new year have gathered in the square despite a lack of celebrations being arranged. The lack of official events was partly because the authorities were concerned that encouraging more partygoers would cause overcrowding. Since 2003, a firework display centred on the London Eye and South Bank of the Thames have provided as an alternative. Since 2014, New Year celebrations have been organised by the Greater London Authority in conjunction with the charity UNICEF, who began ticketing the event to control crowd numbers. A Christmas ceremony has been held in the square every year since 1947. A Norway spruce, or sometimes known as a fir, is presented by Norway's capital city, Oslo, as London's Christmas tree, a token of gratitude for Britain's support during World War II. Besides wartime support, Norway's Prince Olav and the country's government lived in exile in London throughout the war. The Christmas tree is decorated with lights that are switched on at a seasonal ceremony. It is usually held 12 days before Christmas Day. The festivity is open to the public and attracts a large number of people. The switch on is usually followed by several nights of Christmas carol singing and other performances and events. On the 12th night of Christmas, the tree is taken down for recycling. Westminster City Council threatened to abandon the event to save £5,000 in 1980, but the decision was reversed. The tree is selected by the head forester from Oslo's municipal forest and shipped across the North Sea to the port of Felixstowe, and then by road to Trafalgar Square. The first tree was 48 feet, 15 metres tall, but more recently has been around 75 feet, 23 metres tall. In 1987, protesters chained themselves to the tree. In 1990, a man soared into the tree with a chainsaw a few hours before a New Year's Eve party was scheduled to take place. He was arrested and the tree was repaired by tree surgeons, who removed gouged sections of the trunk while the tree was suspended from a crane. The square has become a social and political focus for visitors and Londoners, developing over its history from an espalade, peopled with figures of national heroes, into the country's foremost place politique, as historian Rodney Mace has written. Since its construction, it has been a venue for political demonstrations. The Great Charis Rally in 1848, a campaign for social reform by the working class, began in the square. A ban on political rallies remained in effect until the 1880s, when the emerging of the Labour movement, particularly the Social Democratic Federation, began holding protests. On the 8th of February 1886, also known as Black Monday, protesters rallied against the unemployment leading to a riot in Pall Mall. A larger riot, Bloody Sunday, occurred in the square on the 13th of November 1887. Political rallies continued over the years and throughout the 1980s a continuous anti-apartheid protest was held outside South Africa House. In 1990, the poll tax rise began by a demonstration attended by 200,000 people and ultimately caused rioting in the surrounding area. More recently, there have been anti-war demonstrations opposing the Afghanistan war and the Iraq war. A large vigil was held shortly after the terrorist bombings in London on the 7th of July 2005. Every year on the anniversary of the Battle of Trafalgar, 21st of October, the Sea Cadet Corps hold a parade in honour of Admiral Lord Nelson and the British victory over the combined fleets of Spain and France at Trafalgar. The Royal British Legion holds a silence in the square event on Armistice Day, the 11th of November, in remembrance of those who died in the war. The event includes music and poetry readings, culminating in a bugler playing the last post and a two-minute silence at 11am. In the 21st century, Trafalgar Square has been a location for several sporting events and victory parades. In June 2002, 12,000 people gathered to watch the England national football team World Cup quarter-final against Brazil on a giant video screen which had been erected for the occasion. The square was used by the England national rugby team on the 9th of December 2003 to celebrate their victory in the 2003 Rugby World Cup and on the 13th of September 2005 for the England national cricket team's victory in the Ashes series. On the 6th of July 2005, Trafalgar Square hosted the announcement of London's bid to host the 2012 Summer Olympics. A countdown clock was erected in March 2011, although engineering and weather-related faults caused it to stop a day later. In 2007, it hosted the opening ceremonies of the Tour de France and was part of the course for subsequent races. As an archetypal London location, Trafalgar Square featured in film and television productions, including the swinging London era of the 1960s, including The Avengers, Casino Royale, Doctor Who and The Ipcrest File. It was also used for filming several sketches and cartoon backdrop in the BBC comedy series Monty Python's Flying Circus. 
In May 2007, the square was grassed over with 2,000 square metres of turf for two days in a campaign by London authorities to promote green spaces in the city. In July 2011, due to a building works in Leicester Square, the world premiere of the final film in the Harry Potter series, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2, was held in Trafalgar Square, with a three quarters of a mile red carpet linking the squares. Fans camped in Trafalgar Square for up to three days before the premiere. Despite torrential rain, it was the first film premiere ever to be held there. A Lego architecture set based on Trafalgar Square was released in 2019. It contains models of the National Gallery and Nelson's Column, alongside miniature lions, fountains and double-decker buses. Trafalgar Square is one of the squares on the standard British Monopoly board. It is in the red set alongside the Strand and Fleet Street. The square has seen controversy over busking and street theatre, which have attracted complaints over noise and public safety. In 2012, the Greater London Authority created a bylaw for regulating busking and associated tourism. In 2016, the National Gallery proposed to introduce licensing for such performances. So, I hope you've enjoyed our in-depth look at Trafalgar Square. Whatever podcast service you use to listen to this, please do subscribe and get updates on new shows. And also, please leave us some feedback. Please let me know any places you'd like us to feature in future podcasts by emailing me directly on londonvisited at gmail.com or you can contact us on Twitter and Instagram at London Visited, Facebook on at The London Visited or you can go to our website www.londonvisited.co.uk. Thanks for listening. Really hope you enjoyed our podcast and we'll see you soon on the next one. Take care. Bye.